So this is the best way to lose fat according to all the science. Yeah, I get it. When you Google how to lose fat, it gets confusing real fast. Intermittent fasting, keto, low carb, vegan, carnivore, hit cardio. So in this video, I'm gonna break down a huge study and tell you what all the science says so far is the best way for you to lose fat. First of all, I need to make sure you stick around. So here are some crazy stats. Over 60% of UK adults are considered overweight, 20% obese. In the US, the numbers are even more alarming, with 70% of adults being considered overweight and 40% obese. Yes, this is determined by BMI, but don't be fooled by the marketing. BMI is accurate if you're talking about people that don't have a lot of muscle mass or don't train regularly. They were put into 12 different groups. No intervention, that's just nothing. Energy restriction, so 500 to 1000 calorie deficit. Energy restriction plus high protein. So high protein here was considered 1 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight. Intermittent fasting, mixed exercise, aerobic and resistance training, resistance training, aerobic training, high protein plus resistance training, energy restriction plus high protein plus exercise, energy restriction plus resistance training, energy restriction plus aerobic training, energy restriction plus mixed exercise. Overall, the most effective strategy for fat loss was resistance training or mixed exercise. That's resistance training combined with some cardio plus a calorie deficit and a high protein diet. So there are a few reasons why I feel that this was the most effective way to actually lose fat. Contrary to popular belief that cardio, just because it burns more calories, is the best way. When doing resistance training, the epoch, the calories you burn after the workout is slightly higher. So reason two is when you're losing muscle, you're losing less fat. So you still can be losing weight on a scale, but not actually losing fat. And what most people don't really talk about is gaining muscle requires calories. So your body's using even more energy to actually build muscle. And the final reason is your basal metabolic rate goes up, the amount of calories you burn at rest and the amount of calories you burn when you exercise as well. So this might only be marginal, but if you combine those three things, so you're actually losing more fat, you're burning a bit more calories throughout the day and, well, four things really, you're also building muscle. So that's costing your body energy and you're burning a tiny bit more calories at rest, that seems to be, well, in my view, the reason why this is so effective. Now you may be wondering, Adam, how do I implement this advice? So let's pretend that you've been doing cardio, you've been doing other stuff, but you just haven't got into the swing of things of doing like a resistance training program. So this is what you need to do. The first thing I suggest you do is start small. It's tempting to rush into a three to five day a week split because you've done it before and it worked before and you used to do it in your 20s, but we're talking about now. We want the part of least resistance that's gonna rebuild that habit or build that habit, period. So two sessions a week start with. Just two sessions, 15 to 20 minutes, full body session and start with bands and like your body weight. If you have like a weight set at home, you could start with that too. But I suggest starting with whatever you've got right now. And if you don't have bands, you can order some bands. I've dropped some links below to, like, to some easy bands you can use at home. If you've got a setup, great. Either way, what you wanna do is you wanna start like that. Focus on getting stronger over time. If you haven't checked it out, check out the video I posted last week. It will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to set your training up and also a free workout plan at the end that you can use. The second one here is to get in a calorie deficit. You have three options here. One, track. So track your macros, track your calories. Two is to follow a meal plan. And three is to make some habits, well, to make some behavior changes that are gonna lead to a calorie deficit. I want you to start with option three if you're not working with a coach. If you're working with a coach, a meal plan plan should be the starting point and then working together to make their meal plan like yours. At least an example meal plan to like to help you see how to structure your day. With this, I want you to focus on three to four meals a day. Three meals for most people are just fine. Zero snacks in between. Most of your meal being built around single ingredient whole foods. That's at least 80% of the time and 20% of the time you can have what you want. And with that, one to two servings of fruit or vegetables with each meal. Then this ties in nicely is incorporating a protein, making sure you're having a high protein diet. And what does that mean? That means 0.7 to 
0.8 grams per pound of your body weight in protein per day. That comes out at around 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilogram of your body weight per day. And that can be split up how you like, but generally speaking, what my clients like to do and what I've seen success with in the past is 30 to 50 grams roughly per meal three to four times a day. Focus on lean protein here, like lean meats, lean chicken, fish, seafood. And the final one is cardio. You can go for a walk, you can go for several walks, but let's say you can't get your steps in through walking and you've got some extra time. You can incorporate some cardio two times a week. Let's say you work out with resistance training like two to three times a week, two sessions a week of cardio lasting 20 to 30 minutes a time can work out very well. So you can either use the treadmill. I don't really suggest running, but that's up to you. I suggest being on the rowing machine or you can use the elliptical trainer. You can use the exercise bike. Those are all lower in impact. And if you've ran before, ran in the past, but if you're just introducing running now and you've got quite a lot of fat to lose, I wouldn't recommend it. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover. Any questions at all, comment below. Deeper questions, feel free to send me a message on Instagram at Adam Scott Fit. Have the best day ever and we'll talk soon.